Good morning, church. Good morning. Today's scripture will be from the theme um, dealing with the cross. The scripture for this morning will be coming from Matthew 28, and I will be um, from 1 to 7, and it reads from the message. Um, after the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven, came right up to where they were standing. He rolled back the stone and then he sat on it. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garments shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they couldn't move. But the angel spoke to the women. There is nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He was raised just as he said. Come and look at the place where he lay. Now, go on your way quickly. Tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. He is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. And if you listen to Donald Lawrence like I did this morning, somewhere around that fifth or sixth verse, he said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. So I can't, I don't know what you came to do this morning. I come to praise God. I come to thank God for just being a sacrificial lamb for me when I was not worthy. And as we're still in worship, we would just ask that you participate in this service as we lift the name of the Lord on high. Amen. Lord, I look, sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. righteous name. Good morning, saints of Northside, and good morning to those who are joining us on Facebook Live. We believe that it is really important for us to frame and to put in perspective what we share today, and our children and youth ministry has agreed to help us kind of set the stage, to kind of remember what it felt like on that day 
when they came to that tomb. So I'm going to invite some of the representatives of our children and youth ministry under the leadership of Sister Kim Lancy Grade to come and just set the frame for us and remind us of what it felt like on that day. Amen. Come on, y'all, let's bless God for our children. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Jesus had a job from God that was he die on the cross and rise to set us free from sin. Our youth from north side would like to say the last several words of Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh. Woman, behold thy son. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. I thirst. It is finished. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. So often we want to criticize our kids for the words they say. Sometimes it means instead that we need to remind them of exactly which words matter. And so we bless God for this moment, anxious and nervous as they were. And God bless the parents. And we have a, somebody who wants to be part of the children of youth ministry again. Amen. <laughs> bless God for our chair's willingness to step in. We pray that each and every one of you has a copy of the worship guide that was available out front. If you do not have one, please raise your hand and let us know and we will see to it that you get one, amen. We need a couple down here, please. Right down front here, please. We need two. We only have one. Wow. It's one of the realities of hybrid worship. We don't really know how many people to expect. And so we might have, okay, there we go. We got some more. All right. Does anyone else need a copy of the worship guide in the back, Deacon Lewis?
immediately after we finish this call to worship litany, we will sing the opening hymn, which is printed right there on the same side. Would you please stand if you are able? I will, of course, read the part that says leader, and you will read the part that says people. Are we ready? This is the good news. The grave is empty. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace we now share with each other. Together, hallelujah, Christ Jesus lives today. Amen. Let us sing all four verses of Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Together, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Praise your joys and triumphs cry. Just like he said he would. And because he is risen, we too shall rise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this moment. And thank you, God, for allowing us to see one more Resurrection Sunday, God. There were moments in these last weeks and months when we were not sure that we'd get back here again. But God, you seem fit to bless us with another day of life and health and strength. And for that, God, we say thank you. Now, God, have your way in this worship service, God. Remind us, God, that we've come to worship you, that we've come to magnify and adore you. Thank you, God, for this privilege and for this gift. Now, God, help us to pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Let all God's people say amen. Bless us, bless us. Jesus wins to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Because we make a joyful noise, people outside who are listening to our praise, when we pronounce the benediction and when we go out of here, they'll look at you and they'll say, is that all there was? We thought that based on the sound that we heard coming from the sanctuary, that you all had 500 people in there. We'll be able to say, no, it's just a few folk who are grateful, who are thankful, who are blessed and who know that God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. So on this Resurrection Sunday, let us say together the vision that God has given us to share as Northside Baptist Church. Together, Northside Baptist Church is intentional about making and growing disciples and empowering people to live changed lives. Amen. I want to just share a couple of announcements and updates. First, I want to thank God for the experience we've had this last week, Holy Week, where we have walked the labyrinth, where we have shared the Last Supper, where we enjoyed phenomenal preaching and powerful worship on Friday. And just bless God and thank each and every one of you who were able to be with us. I know that you are stronger, that you have had a new revelation of God's goodness in your life. And so we thank God for this, for this holy season. Now, as many of my friends who, uh, whose churches have Holy Week on steroids, just like we have had, uh, he is risen and most of us are about dead. <laughs> So, I am announcing today that we are taking a Sabbath week this week. We're not doing anything as a church. If you want to pray at 645 on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, we invite you to do it on your own. But some of us need to catch our breath. Some of us need to just step back for a minute. Um, 
if there is a real emergency, and I, and I don't mean that your show didn't come on when you thought it was supposed to come on, a real emergency, please reach out to your deacon. And we can find all of our deacons on our website. Please continue to check the website, www.northsidebcbaltimore.org, if there's information you need to get from us. Um, we want to thank you for that and for understanding that um, we are all human and we need a break, all of us do, from time to time. And I thank God for the phenomenal leadership God has placed in this church. Um, they've almost made me not feel guilty about calling them so much. Amen. Amen. But thank you to each and every one of you. And thank you for the ways in which those of you who are here, as well as those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, continue to bless the work of ministry by your constant and consistent giving of tithes and offerings. For those who may not know, for those who are sharing with us today, virtually there are three ways that you can support the work of ministry at this place. You can go on your device to the App Store, find Givelify, find Northside Baptist Church. In fact, I'll be wearing the same robe I'm wearing right now uh, on that picture. That's one way. The second way is by Cash App. Uh, dollar sign Northside BC Baltimore is our Cash App tag title. And of course, the third way, and we uh, invite those who don't feel comfortable using the first two methods to bring the tithe or offering. We have a box out front so that we are not asking our ushers to move about, to uh, have to engage. If you have brought your tithe or offering today, you can put it in the box. We have a trustee out there monitoring it to make sure that we are all doing our very best to stay safe and to stay faithful to God. Amen? Amen? Our custom continues to be that when we give, we lift the method by which we give. And even if you've already given, just raise your hand and repeat after me the affirmation we make. Divine love, Divine love. Through, me, through me blesses and multiplies this gift. It blesses the receiver and returns to the giver, blessed and multiplied. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift and the giver. Bless us as we trust you with what you've already entrusted to us. May it be used for the furtherance of the kingdom on earth. We pray it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would please turn to the back side of the worship guide that you have. There you will find a Resurrection Sunday litany that we invite you to join in with us. And then immediately after that, our music ministry will come. I would be remiss and I'm willing to pay the price later. Um, but I, we are so grateful to have both of our sons in Baltimore with us. Amen. And, uh, Jonathan is with us. Joseph got in at God's hour last night, and so he got a pass today. But in the same way that you enjoy having your family with you, we absolutely love having them with us. Amen. Are we ready? All right. The resurrection, when we celebrate the victory of Christ over death and despair, is the highest celebration of the year. As this day changed everything about human history, dear Lord, help it to work its changes on us as well. O oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. By his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Together, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may forever live with him in the joy of his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Our music ministry will bless us now, and then we will return with a word from the Lord.
Bless God's name. Bless God's name that he decided. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Because he could have decided not to die. Because he has that much power. But he decided to die just to save you and me. Bless God's holy name. If you have your Bibles, if you are joining us online, if you're in the sanctuary with us and you are able, we invite you to stand. Mm. As we turn to read our scripture, our scripture today is found in the 24th chapter of Luke's gospel. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. He is risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every knee. Twenty-four, beginning at the first verse. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. I read in your hearing Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, God, have your way in this moment. Have this way with this your servant. You know what your people are standing in need of, God, and you know what lack, what void, what absence there is in my life. Pray now, God, that you would just work in spite of all of that to the end that your name gets glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to just talk to you for a few moments today about a very simple subject, one word subject, indeed, indeed. If you had been there on that Friday more than 2,000 years ago, you would have wondered how anybody ever could have called it a good Friday. It was a fateful Friday. It was a painful Friday. It was a terrifying Friday. If you had been one of the people who had followed the teacher, who had clearly displayed that he had all of the answers, who had clearly shown that he had all of the power, and who had clearly shown that he was indeed the Son of God, you might have been hiding and in a corner somewhere by the time Sunday morning rolled around. If you had been a follower of 
his. Maybe you would have been one of those people who would have started following him after he changed water to wine. Or maybe you would have been one of those people who followed him after he healed the brother who had sat by the pool for 38 years. And you believed that nothing was impossible. You had come to believe that it was all going to happen according to plan and it was going to work itself out. And even though they had arrested him, even though they had taken him into custody, even though his disciples had forsaken him, surely something was going to happen for a turnabout to happen, for a change to happen. But now it's three days later. Nothing has happened. Not a single solitary thing has changed. They're still scared and he's still dead. It would have been hard to call that first Friday a good Friday. It would have been hard to call that Sunday a good Sunday. But you know, there's something in the human spirit that once a kernel of a seed of belief has been placed in the human spirit, there's something in us that refuses to let go of that which we have come to believe. And so on this day, more than 2,000 years later, with the benefit of all of this hindsight and with the benefit of more than 20 centuries of preaching and 20 centuries of church work, we get to come back again today and say, indeed. See, when it's not clear to you how it's going to work out, it's hard to say that word. But, but once you have an encounter and an experience that confirms for you what you thought was the truth, it is a whole lot easier to say, indeed. Let me, let me see if I can paint this picture a little bit more clearly for you. There was this grand idea that God Almighty drew up with the Son and said, listen, I have tried to get the people to do what I've asked them to do. I've, I've tried to get them to be obedient and to follow. I've given them kings when they asked for kings. I've, given them prophets when they asked for prophets. I've given them judges when they asked for judges. It seems to me that there's only one real solution. And so the agreement was struck. We didn't know about the agreement at the time, but the agreement was struck between God the Father and God the Son. God the Father says to God the Son, if you go, I'll be with you. If you do what I'm assigning you to do, I will show up in the most difficult moments. And if you trust me, I'll never doubt. I'll never leave you in doubt or wonder. And so God the parent sent God the son through, as the preachers of my youth would say, 40 and two generations. Born of a virgin wrapped in swaddling clothes and was laid in a manger. And the plan was going along just fine. Everything had fallen into place. People would come to him with problems and situations and all he had to do was speak the word. Rulers would ask for help with employees in their households and because of his power he didn't even have to make a house call all he had to do was just say to the person your loved one is healed and they were healed he would show up at at wakes hallelujah and he would cause funeral directors to lose commission because people had gathered to get ready to bury the dead. But when he showed up, his very presence had a way of changing that 
which was dead to that which became alive. Now, I'm not just talking about what happened in the Bible. I'm talking about some of us who were on our way straight to hell. Who were headed the wrong way on a one-way street. But one day Jesus stopped by in our life. One day Jesus called our names. And we couldn't help but answer his call. And now we are happy all the day. That, that was how the plan was supposed to work. Somewhere along the way, the plan seemed to have gone awry. And so we come to this moment, this, this morning after the week has ended, when it is okay for people to visit the place where they had laid him. And with fear and trepidation, they come to the tomb. They don't really know what to expect. But based on what they've lived through, it could well be said that they were dealing with PTSD. They had watched these Roman soldiers with nail spikes drive them into his hand. And they had watched as his own mother stood at the cross and wept because there was nothing she could do. And, and nothing seemed like it was about to turn around. But they came to that tomb anyway. They came because, as I said a minute ago, something had been planted in their spirit that had told them that it was okay to believe it was going to be all right. I need to talk to somebody today who is sitting not where you want to be who's dealing with some things that you really didn't think you ought to have to be dealing with, but you heard the voice of the Lord say, come unto me and I will give you rest. And even though things aren't the way you want them to be right now, you're still holding on that God is still able. That's what made them go to that tomb. It's because they had heard him say, on the third day, I will rise. So they come and they find this interesting and troubled scene where the stone has been rolled away and his body is nowhere to be seen. And they start doing what all of us good believers do when things don't seem to be going the way we should think they should. Instead of talking to God, we start talking to one another. And they start having conversation. We thought he said. Didn't you hear him say it? He said it, didn't he? Yeah, I heard him say it. I thought I heard him say it. And then they stay there long enough. Lord have mercy. For the transition to happen. Not just to say, I thought he said he was going to do it. But to stand with the sacred memory of hearing him say he was going to work it out. See, one of the reasons we should never get but so discouraged is because we serve a God who is able to work it out. And if we don't have any other confidence, if we don't have any other takeaway from the resurrection, it is that God is still on the throne. And God is still working it out. So I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You might be in the room. You might be watching us on Facebook Live. But you're sitting right in a moment when you're waiting for God to work it out. It might be a job. It might be a relationship. It might be a physical issue. I just stopped by to tell you on this Resurrection Sunday 2022 that God is still working it out. And so they waited. They stood there at that empty tomb and they waited until something would happen. And then they got the word. He is risen like he 
said he would. He is risen. Like he told y'all he was going to do. He is risen. Because of who he is. And because, who, because of who God is. He could not stay dead. He could not stay where he was. See, we need to be people who understand that God will not leave us right where we are. God will stop by in the middle of the insanity that we live in and show us that God is still able to pick us up, to turn us around, and to set us and our situation on solid ground. So they stayed there. It was an uncomfortable time period. You know that, that kind of time period when somebody asks an uncomfortable question and folks struggle to come up with an answer that makes everybody else comfortable in the room? They stood there. They looked at one another. They started fidgeting with one another. They started fidgeting with the things they had brought. And then finally one of them said, He is risen. He is risen. And what the church has done is the church has put that adverb on the end of it. He is risen indeed. See, what, what the adverb indeed does is it emphasizes. That's what adverbs do. Adverbs emphasize what's already been said. So when we hear them say he is risen just like he said he would, the modern church has now said he is risen indeed. He said he was going to do it. And in spite of the obstacles that had happened, in spite of the problems that he had encountered, in spite even of the opposition he faced, he said he was going to do it. And indeed, he has. Now we can't turn to one another and say indeed. We, we're still trying to operate with protocols that will protect us. But I just want you to look at your hand and tell your hand indeed. I want you to look at that hand and remember the next time you are in a place and a space where it's not clear that God is going to show up or God is going to pull you out. And I want you to remember that on April the 17th, 2022, when you sat in worship celebrating a resurrected Savior where the church has said, in spite of what it looked like, he got up indeed. And I want you to be able to say to yourself, indeed. I want you to be able to remember how it must have felt to have been there when he died. But now they are there looking at an empty tomb. And the testimony they can make is he got up like he said he would. And if he's done it before, he can do it again. If he's brought himself through death, through pain, through misery, is there not anything that he can also do to those who love him? And so this week, as you deal with difficulties, as you deal with problems, as you deal with challenges, just say to yourself, indeed. Mm -hmm. It will remind you that even the worst enemy, death, could not win. Because God was in charge. Because God is still on the throne. Just look at your right hand now and say, indeed. indeed. Now we got the right hand and we got the left hand. Now I want you to put those hands together and just say, indeed. Indeed. God is still able to make a way. Indeed. God is still lifting up those who believe in him. Indeed. God is still the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can ask or imagine. And they remembered what he said. And what he said was, after three days, I'll rise again. 
And when all of that sacred memory came back to them, they were able to say he is risen. Just like he said he would. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He's not just risen in the tomb, from the tomb. He has risen up in my spirit. So that every time I come up against something that wants to take me out, I say, indeed. Every time I come up against something that is trying to keep me from walking into the blessing God has already prepared for me, you and I can say, indeed. They stood there. They looked at the empty tomb. They remembered his words. And then they were able to greet one another with the same way we can greet one another. He is risen. He is risen, he is risen. He is risen. Indeed. indeed. But you know what? The good news is it doesn't just stop with him being risen. Because he was raised, you and I shall be raised. And because he got up, the good news is that one day, God will see fit to raise up all of those who believe in him, who are called by his name, who trust in his power, and who rely on his grace. Indeed. And what a reunion that's going to be. When we get to see loved ones and family members, but most importantly, when we get to see Jesus. We get to tell him how much it meant to have the knowledge that he was on our side. And every time we faced something that was a problem for us, we could say, indeed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance, Lord. Thank you for the confidence, God. Thank you for the commitment you've made to each and every one of us. So that just like he got up, we too shall get up. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. He has risen indeed. indeed. Lord, we thank you for the moment of proclamation. Now, God, we pray your presence in the moment of invitation. If there's someone in this room, if there's someone online with us who has not made a decision, God, to receive you fully and to receive you as Savior indeed. God, we pray now that you will move on their heart. Grant them the desire and grant them the boldness to say, I believe, I believe indeed that Christ Jesus is my Savior. I want him in my life. I want him to make a difference in my life. We invite even now, God, that you would move on the hearts of those who do not have relationship with you to become committed and connected with you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship to those who are in the room as well as those who are watching virtually, we're going to sing this old familiar hymn of the church. I serve a risen savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever folks may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. And if you are with us today and do not have a connection with a church, do not have a relationship with a body of believers who know God as Lord and Savior, we invite you to come and unite with us. You can just raise your hand or you can come down the aisle. We invite everyone who's able to stand and let us sing together the hymn of invitation. He lives. And if there's one who does not have relationship, with Christ Jesus or his church, we invite you. I serve a risen Savior. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. I know that he is living.
there one who will come. We invite you. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time he's always near. He lives. He walks with me. He walks with me and talks with me along the narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation. Salvation to report. You ask me. We can sing the chorus one more time. The chorus. standing let us receive the benediction now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you henceforth and even forevermore let all of God's people say amen 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 amen, amen. so we need to make sure that we dismiss safely our ushers are in the aisle asking that you would please walk towards the middle and walk out we're going to exit from the back, so Sister Foster is giving us direction so that we may exit quickly. God bless you. Stay safe. We will see you next Sunday. Amen. Let the church say amen. Oh, I'm so sorry. We have Easter bags for all of our young people and children. I see Sister Kim Lancy going outside. If you got a young person in your house or in your life, please take one. Let the church say amen.